So, Raymo, hope I'm saying your name right, because I keep seeing interviews and people say it in all different types of ways. Everyone is doing it very different there, but do whatever you want. Okay, <laughs> great. So, first of all, tell me about your song, Water Gun. I've been singing it all week. Really? So has James, who's behind the camera there. <laughs> so, tell me all about it. What is the meaning behind the song? So the song is about a very uh, strong message and uh, it's a current topic which is unfortunately known uh, to, to all of us. Um, so it's an appeal for peace and uh, it tells a story from a boy who was playing with water guns when he was a kid and is now in the real war and has to fight for his life, for his family, which is for sure a very sad story. But there's also a lot of hope inside and I would say it's hope for a better future and hope for a future with uh, hopefully a lot of peace for all of us. That's a great message, especially for Eurovision. So. I know you're no stranger to singing competitions, having taken part in and won the voice of Switzerland. How does doing a competition like Eurovision compare to previous ones that you've done? I think um, it's, I can feel less the, the competition vibe. It's more, Eurovision is more than a big family. Until now, I'm sure, I'm wondering how it will be uh, in the next few days when it gets uh, further. <laughs> but um, yeah, and also I think what's similar is that you just have this one chance. You know, you, you have to go on stage and you have to be 100% focused from the beginning. You don't have a, a second chance or a third one. So you have to be very focused and do your best thing from the beginning. Yeah. So before you go on stage, are you nervous? Is there anything running through your mind? Do you have to center yourself? Do you have a pre-show routine? I have like, um, I always uh, warm up my voice pretty good because I think it's important uh, for a song also like that because it starts so low, gets very high. Uh, so it's important uh, that my voice is uh, warmed up well. But I don't have a special ritual or something. I just... Uh, believe in myself, I drink some cup of tea probably that everything is uh, well and then go for it. And then go on stage, <laughs> amazing. So let's talk about your voice a bit because it has an amazing quality to it. It's so rich, you've got an incredible depth of range. When did you first realize that you could sing and at what point did you decide this is going to be my career? I think I was around 10 probably or 11 and uh, I started playing the keys by myself, I just uh, because we had a keyboard at our place at home. And um, I tried out to, to play some songs I heard in the radio and uh, they were always kind of pop, uh, pop songs because I, I liked them already then. And uh, once I started to try also singing to it and uh, I had a lot of fun, it gave me chills and uh, it was a good way to express my feelings. And, yeah, I keep on doing it and one day I started to, to do some videos and I posted them on TikTok and on Instagram and everyone was kind of uh, excited about it and uh, wrote some lovely comments and I did it further and further and yeah, I always had a lot of fun and the people always were very excited because they never expected uh, the voice I have. And uh, yeah, it was always kind of pretty low. And uh, I think when you see me, you think, oh, a baby face. <laughs> uh, you expect uh, not a low voice yeah. like that. And I think, yeah, it's always kind of a surprising thing. And you're a multi-instrumentalist. So tell me about some of the instruments you play. Because I play piano, so oh. I already have an affinity with you there. So what do you play and when did you start playing all these different instruments? So the first instrument I was playing was the flute because... Uh, in Switzerland, if you want to learn an instrument, you have to learn the notes and stuff like with the flute. And uh, then I got further to the accordion because my father was playing it and it was always a dream to do it as well. And then I uh, recognized uh, the keys of my mom. And uh, yeah, I, I loved it and enjoyed it. And later on, I tried to play the guitar as well. So I played a little bit. I just have a few uh, chords I played to, yeah to sing, sing on it and uh, yeah once I also tried the contrabass oh. so the big one yeah, yeah yeah because my brother is playing it so I was gonna say is your family musical or did you just come to they this are. on your own everyone is says uh, yeah my mother not really she played once the keyboard a little bit but um, my father and my brother are very do uh, they sing no, no one is singing. Ah. I'm the I'm the only one. I don't know where where does it come <laughs> from. <laughs> All that talent's just gone to you. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the lyrics of your song. Do you have a favorite lyric? I mean, we talked about how deep the meaning of the song is. Is there a particular moment that you think is the most important lyrically within this song? 
That's a good question. So I have a kind of a favorite part, uh, but um, it's the bridge where I break totally free and get I go very high. But the lyrics are just uh, what we've become. I think it's a it's a great lyrics also because it's kind of a, um, it can be sort in different ways. You know what we've become. I think is yeah, uh, but I I really like it from the beginning to the end. So I don't have especially. Uh, lyric I prefer the most. You mentioned the bridge there, so is that your favorite part to sing as well? So when you're on stage, that's the bit you're looking forward to. Yeah, it's also the, the hardest part to sing because it's so high and uh, yeah, it's kind of a, a long time. I sing the same note mm. and uh, it could go also worse when I sing it wrong. <laughs> but you won't, you won't. It Hopefully will be not. <laughs> and I think the beginning is also very hard because it's so low. Um, and yeah, it's the first time on stage I'm also moving. I never danced before, and uh, right. it's the first time I do it on stage. And to combine two things together, which both needs a lot of energy, is kind of a very hard thing. I had to rehearse it a lot, but uh, yeah. So that is an interesting point, actually, just to talk about your breath control, because we focus a lot about vocals on my channel. So, yeah. how has it felt controlling your breath alongside? movement and singing and have you had to do anything special to prepare for that? I never thought about that it could be so hard but for sure uh, it's kind of a, a normal thing I mean uh, first time when I did it I was in uh, in a dance school and uh, learned just the movements and then I tried to combine both things together and I was oh <laughs> damn it's it's kind of very strong because it's just yeah you lose kind of 50% of the energy uh, which goes into the movement stuff and uh, you get sweaty you you don't have the same power especially for the long and high notes uh, yeah so it, it needed a lot of time to also yeah just learn it and I did it over again and over again uh, just to get used to it and now it's totally fine but uh, in the beginning it was kind of hard yeah and you mentioned that you do a vocal warm-up before you go on stage. So I wondered if you'd been trained vocally or if this is something that you've just done all yourself, all of the exercises that you do, you've learned yourself. I went to, to a vocal coach uh, for six years uh, and uh, I learned a lot of things, a lot of good things. Uh, also with the technique and stuff like also the warm-up, I never did a warm-up before and she said you have to do it it's very important also cool down after it to just uh, because you only have one time your your things and if they're broke or something it's gone and it's something that I always talk about on my channel so I'm nodding like this because that's something I totally totally agree with okay great so let's think through to after your performance everything's over and you're moving on to the next steps of your career what is next for you after Eurovision I'm working on new music right now and I can't wait to release it and uh, yeah so I'm very happy to say that Eurovision everything happens since the last two three months are kind of my big dream uh, since a long time and I'm all day somewhere on the road and uh, I'm in touch with music and it's so it feels so good and feels like uh, yeah I arrived in my uh, dream destination <laughs> and it would be the dream to get further like this to just be yeah do a lot of music and uh, release new songs and playing a lot of concerts. Well, I can't wait to see what's next from you. Before we finish, can you just give my subscribers one piece of performing advice? One piece of performing advice? You mean vocally or just in general? Just in general or vocally if you feel like there's something that you want to tell them. So for sure, I think it's very important. Uh, we talked about the vocal uh, warm-up. Uh, it's an important thing. Many of uh, singers, professional ones also, I know, but they never had a vocal coach. They said, I have like, how to say, uh, a straw to yes. um, do these blubber things, you know? Yes. And uh, when I was backstage with that one, a lot of people say, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. And they never heard about something uh, like vocal warm-up. And I told them and they said, oh, I just have like a lot more power and uh, I think you should do that on YouTube if you Google vocal warm up five minutes or something there are a lot of things you can uh, you can do it I think this is very important and just uh, yeah I think it's also important to be yourself on stage and uh, enjoy the moment also that's great advice Remo thank you so much and the best of luck with your performance at Eurovision thank you so much thank you bye <laughs>